A lot of Hollywood directors boast that their films have no CGI, as if CGI is some sort of cancer and not using it is a selling point to their film's authenticity. Christopher Nolan is one director that has a habit of doing this. But since the invention of the moving image, filmmaking has never really been about authenticity. It's always been about tricking the audience into believing that what they were seeing on the screen was authentic. Even the moving image itself is just a bunch of still images flicking just fast enough to trick your eye and make you believe there really is motion. So boasting about doing it for real isn't just laughable, but it's also a bit of an insult to all the people who worked so hard to create the illusion that it was. And it isn't really true. Nolan's Batman trilogy is known for having done its stunts for real. The truck flip stunt in The Dark Knight was shot from multiple angles and, as you can see, it was definitely done for real, but the piston that actually made the truck flip had to be removed digitally in post. A similar thing was true for the stunt where the SWAT team falls off the side of a building. Once again, the stunt was done for real, but the safety mats all had to be digitally removed in post. Other digital effects included CG bats, green screen replacements, and the stadium explosion. And Nolan's use of CGI and visual effects isn't just apparent in his work on Batman, but throughout all his films, including Inception, Interstellar, Dunkirk, Tenet, and yes, maybe even Oppenheimer. Inception boasted about having done the rotating hallway scene for real, and they did really build a giant rotating hallway, but they still needed CG assets floating around and digital set extensions to really sell the shot. Inception also used CGI for environments like Limbo and the street bending sequence. Interstellar boasted about not using any green screen, but VFX artists still had to rotoscope the models to combine them later with the digital matte background. Dunkirk used CGI to add smoke and pyrotechnics to the planes and ships. They also added CG planes to the background like this one here. And all the soldiers in this shot are actually a full CG crowd simulation. Tenet had CG helicopters and CG explosions. And in addition to CG dust and debris, they had to digitally remove wires and tow ropes needed for Tenet's multiple stunts. In fact, nowadays, almost every film is edited, color graded, and composited inside a computer. And because CGI means computer-generated imagery, any image that is processed inside a computer has to be digitized beforehand. And therefore, technically, is an image generated by a computer, even if it is later printed onto film. But Oppenheimer wasn't. Oppenheimer wasn't shot with digital cameras, and it wasn't edited or color graded on a computer either. Oppenheimer was shot with IMAX equipment, produced in a lab, and then printed as reels. These film reels were then edited as videos and locked. Following that, the makers cut and spliced the original negatives together and color coded by adjusting the timing of printing lights to balance out the color. At the end of this entirely analog process, they printed it without ever having passed through a computer. So was it really true that Oppenheimer had zero CGI shots? Well, not really. Deneg produced more than 100 VFX shots from more than 400 elements, and while these elements were shot practically, they did have to be composited, and digital compositing was used for them, meaning they had to be digitized, composited, and then reverted back to their original format. So even though Nolan uses all the measures he can to avoid CGI, he still ends up having to use it. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, watch one of his movies and try to guess which shots use CGI. You can't tell the difference, because Nolan is a master at combining digital and practical effects, and that's the whole point. They shouldn't be advertising that they use minimal CGI and no green screens, but rather that they use it but you won't be able to tell when. Because, like practical and special effects, CGI is just another tool filmmakers can use to trick us into believing what they want us to believe. And just like bad practical and bad special effects, CGI is only bad when it fails to do so.